she had with him. Arkansas? Yes. Camden, uh, Arkansas. Always from, always lived in Camden? Yes. Wow. Um, and Buckshot is a childhood nickname? Yes. Where did that come from? Family, a friend, or what? What is that from? Oh man, name me. He said I used to work with him when I was in high school, and he said I'm gonna name you Buckshot. And it's it, your nickname. It just stuck. They been calling me. Ever since I was 14. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I was curious, as a, as a child, did you always want to get into law enforcement? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, did you know anyone who, who was with your local sheriff's department or police department when you were younger? Yes. yes. Gotcha. OK. Um, and so you worked for a long time with the, the Wachita County Sheriff's Department. I read 46 years, is that correct? 46 years and eight months. Wow, 46 years and eight months, you gotta include that. Um, yeah. What were some of the things, What were? did you have a particular role with the Sheriff's Department there? Were you patrolling mostly? Yeah, I patrolled for 25 years and did my CID work you know, we didn't have a CD officer when I started. And uh, I did patrolling and CID work. After 46 years, what, what made you want to retire from the Sheriff's Department? Well, uh, a lot of things made want me want to retire. I was going to go in business for myself. And uh, the Camden Police Department kept calling me and wanted me to come to work here. And I was off five months and I came to work. Gotcha. So I was curious, in that five months after working for so many years, were you kind of bored? Or, I mean, what'd you do while you were retired? Well, I wore a lot of hats at the sheriff's department, a lot of hats. And you said that the Camden Police Department was calling you, wanting you to come work for the for the police department. Um, did you know, I'm assuming based on your time as a sheriff's deputy, you probably knew a lot of people in the Camden Police Department anyhow, right? Yes, yes. Gotcha, okay. so. So did it take a lot of persuasion to get you to come out of retirement? Or, I mean, how, how, how did that process go? I love law enforcement and I want to always want to be a police officer. So I accepted. Gotcha. Okay. And how long ago was that, that you joined the Camden Police Department? I came to work. January 2011. I retired September 2010. 2010. And I came to work over here 11. January 11. Gotcha. Wow, so it's been <laughs> 10 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How many, um, so you're, how many days a week are you patrolling? I patrol, I work four days a week. Some days, some weeks I work five. Depending gotcha. on what's going on. Gotcha. What's a, what's a normal day for you when you clock in? Are you driving around, walking around? Seven talking to people? three. Seven to three. Gotcha. And are you responding to police calls? Are you... Um, you know, do you have certain places you go every day? Uh, just over town. The, the chief gave me a uh, say what I want to do. I, I do what I want to do. 
Gotcha. I do my job. But if I want to go to call and back in about uh, another officer, up I go. They give me that privilege. Gotcha. Well, that's that. That's great. Um, I'm curious what in your decades of experience in law enforcement, and now you know, ten years as the, the four decades as a sheriff's deputy, ten years as a police officer. What do you think makes someone a good um, police officer, a good in law enforcement? What you know, what characteristics? You, the gun and the badge don't make a good police officer. You got to want to do it and love people and care for folks, you know. Oh, certainly. That's that's kind of one thing that I really wanted to talk to you about is like, I, I, it seems from what I've read about you and your career, everyone knows you. And it seems like you've been doing something right when it comes to, you know, policing and then kind of strengthening bonds within your community as an officer. Um, is that kind of what you tell people? Like you gotta, you gotta care for people. It's beyond, as you said, the badge and the gun. It's, you know, mm -hmm. getting to know the members of your community. Mm -hmm. You got, you gotta wanna do it. You can treat everybody right, but you can't treat everybody the same. Um, and I'm just wondering, and um, if you ever speak to, you know, younger people looking to get into law enforcement, do you have particular advice that you give to them? Yes. Yes. And what would that be? I can tell you how to be a police officer in Camden, Arkansas. That's where I did all my time. You got to be polite. Gun don't make, gun in the badge don't make a good officer. You got to want to do it. Roger that. Totally. Do you, um, okay, a couple more things before, before I let you go. Um, is there a particular moment in your career that stands out to you when you think back? Is there any certain times that, um, that you think about the most? I've taken more people home than I've taken to jail when I was patrolling. I love people. Do you think you'll retire anytime soon or you're just going for it? I'm gonna let the good Lord make that choice. I like that. I like that. Um, and just one, one last thing I wanted to ask. I've never been to Arkansas, particularly Camden. What's, what's it like there? What's the community like? What are the, what are the people like? If you can't live in Camden, you can't live nowhere in Arkansas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, clearly spoken from, from Mr. Camden himself. <laughs> yes. I like it. Well, um, thank you, Officer Smith, for your time. Obviously, your amazing dedication to your community. I'm, it sounds like I'm sure the people around you, your coworkers, your family, people of Camden really appreciate you for it and, and respect you so much for it. Um, so I, I wish you the best and obviously congratulations on such an amazing career with more to come, obviously, uh, in the future. Thank you. Yeah. Well, that was Kelly Hayes right there, bringing us that really awesome story. And uh, I'm gonna bring her on right now. Kelly, thanks for joining us here on News Now from Fox. What a fun story assignment to get to know him, right? <laughs> I know, don't you love Buckshot? I and just love that nickname? Buckshot. <laughs> um, and also, you know, you've gotta wanna do it. Do you know that? You have to want to do it. Yeah, he really made that clear. It's not about a couple of things he emphasized the whole time I talked to him was it's not about the gun and the badge. It's about you got to want to do it. You got to love people. You got to want to, you know, care for people, be around people, which is like obviously 
his MO and why he's been doing this for mm -hmm. so long at this point and continues to. I found this to be such a timely story because there's honestly a lot of controversy surrounding police officers right now. And to see him come forward and share his experiences after decades of serving, his remarks were really, really cool for me to hear that he just loves people and he had all the right intentions of wanting to be a police officer to help the community. That's what it's all about, right? Yeah, 100 percent. I, I asked him at one point about, um, you know, if he felt encouraged by the national conversation that's happened, certainly over the past year, um, given everything that we know about him. He's 91 at this point, so he's lived through a lot of um, decades in America. Um, he's a black man. He's also a police officer. He just comes at this with so much perspective. Um, and he said that he he really agreed with the conversation happening around police reform. Um, and definitely his his um, comments about just caring for people. And, and I don't know if you caught, but there was one point in that interview where he said that he'd taken more people home than he'd taken to jail. And it seemed like that was um, a really proud thing for him. Um, so I, I just feel like that speaks a lot about him and his, you know, how he approaches police. Yeah, he was really sweet. It kind of took him a second to get going. You know, he's given you the yes and no answers, but you asked some really great questions, um, especially about talking to younger people who want to get into that line of work. And uh, he gives great words of advice, right? Yes, definitely. I was coming in there, but he um, he's turning 92 in May, um, and I heard uh, through the through the grapevine that he eats a lot of veggies, tries to avoid the the fast food, and it just seems like he loves you know as as you age, um, working has really kept his mind healthy, and you know it's, it gives him a sense of purpose. So it just seems like he really gets a lot out of his job, you know, into his 90s. Yeah, he, he tried to step away for a second and, and couldn't stay away, clearly. And he was not camera shy at all, just kind of chilling, you know, listening to your questions and answering in a really great way. Um, I'm, I'm curious, I'm not sure if you asked it or not, but with being in that line of work for so long, how different from when he first started uh, this job is as a police officer than it is now, right? Yeah, so I didn't specifically ask him that, but you can you can imagine how much has changed um, since. Because if you think about it, he's got over half a century's um, worth of law enforcement experience. So, like, just the evolution of um, policing and and just technology, probably within policing, all of those things have obviously changed over time. Um, that. Yeah, it's it's pretty incredible um, how long he's worked and done that job, whether he was a sheriff's deputy or now a decade being a police officer and how much he's he's probably seen in that time um, is, is incredible for sure. Kelly, as reporters and doing interviews, especially like this, such a human interest story, what was your biggest takeaway after interviewing him? Um, I thought that it, it, you know, I kind of am drawn to people who he didn't seem like he was a man of many words. Um, and you know, maybe that was this, it, the fact that I was speaking to him over zoom, but I just felt like his message was pretty simple, you know, have empathy, um, for people. And he uses that in policing, but I really feel like that carries, um, over to really anything that you do in life. Um, and, you know, he, he was pretty funny, too. Like, he seems like he has a, a fun sense of humor. And it seems like all the people that work around him who kind of helped facilitate this interview care a lot about him and, you know, are just happy to give him this um, attention, you know. Yeah, Buckshot was definitely uh, a character 
and I'm sure he's very loved in the communities that he services. Well, Kelly, thanks for being with us here on News Now. I know uh, I think this is your first time on, so we'll be seeing a lot more of your face as you continue to do stories like this, right? Yes, 100%. Daytona. So fun. Love to be here. Hope to be back. Okay, Kelly, thank you so much. And uh, if you missed that story, if you missed this little interview here, or you're just tuning in, don't worry, give us a follow on 